Hi, this is Karthik from azurautomation.com and this is part 16 of our PDD video series. And in this part, we'll be talking about Specflow Excel. Specflow Excel is a Specflow plugin that allows you to define requirements and example sets in Excel files. These requirements can be used in the same way a normal plain text gherkin feature files can be used. So there are two ways to use the Excel files to extend your specifications. One, you can define an entire feature file in an Excel sheet using the worksheet as a scenario, or you can extend the scenario outline examples in the normal plain text feature files with an Excel tables. So we'll be actually discussing about the second one, the extending scenario outline examples in normal plain text feature files with Excel tables. The reason is, Specflow plus Excel is not a free tool or a free plugin. It's actually proprietary, meaning you need to buy the license for that. And since I'm doing a video series and I'm just trying to help you out and I don't want to violate the licensing, I'm just going to show you the second one, not the first one. Because the first version, which is nothing but the entire feature file in Excel using worksheet as a scenario, it'll actually add a, a separate scenario in the existing feature file which is going to be a cumbersome thing which I don't want to show you just I want to show you how we can extend the scenario outline examples and we'll see how to retrieve the data from an excel sheet and how to work with that so for that I'm going to flip to Visual Studio all right so this is my Visual Studio and I have already created a unit testing project and you can see that from here and I have also added the reference for the uh, spec flow here and I have added the reference for the any unit framework as well so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add the feature file so for that I'm going to just right click and I'm going to go to the add and new item and here is the spec flow feature file so I'm just going to add this all right so there is a feature file for us and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create a scenario outline so that I can show you the examples uh, feature and we are going to retrieve the examples data not from the table which we're going to create right here as we have already discussed in scenario outline of this particular BDD video series we are going to retrieve the data not from the tables rather we're going to retrieve the data from a Excel sheet so for doing that, we need to use an at source tag. So we'll just discuss that in a minute. So I'm just going to create an example here. And what is it has is it has given I have entered 50 into the calculator. So instead of 50, uh, I'm going to type the value coming from an Excel sheet. So num1, num2, and I'm going to call this as uh, result maybe. All right. And then in the examples, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add num1, num2, and result. Right? And this time, I'm actually not going to add any of the data right here. Usually, we used to add the values in here, right? Like 50 or 60. And the result is going to be like. 110 is not the way which I'm going to do. If you do this way, it's pretty much the normal way of doing the, uh, the scenario outline. You just retrieve the data right from this particular table. Rather retrieving the data from this particular examples table, I'm going to use the external data source. The external data source is going to be your Excel sheet. So again, this plugin is actually installed in my machine in my project already so to install that just go to the package manager and you can see that I have already installed this particular package specflow.plus.excel so you can do that using this command install package specflow.plus.excel if you do this you will have the plugin installed and if you just put a at source this particular tag will actually point out the external excel sheet that you have so i don't have any excel sheet so if you just open this particular folder in my explorer you can see that i don't have any excel sheet 
I'm going to quickly create a Excel sheet here. So for that, I'm just going to create a Excel sheet. Just hit new. Do we have an option of Excel? Okay, we have one. So I'm going to call this as data.xls and I'm going to just open this Excel sheet and we'll just give a value in here. Let's say num1, num2 and result. So this is the value which I'm looking for. Let's give a small number here. 20 comma 30 is 50 and uh, 40 comma 20 is 60. All right, so this is, the, uh, this is the value which I'm trying to evaluate. So I'm just gonna save. You can, of course, make this as bold and make this much uh, look much prettier if you want to. So it's, it's up to you how you want to make this particular uh, Excel sheet look like. So I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna close it. So the main purpose of going with the Excel data sheet is in order to reduce the cumbersome uh, cumbersome data that you would put in here. It's just three column right now, so it's pretty much fine. But what if there are uh, more number of columns, like say 20 or 30 or something like that, and managing those data into the feature file is also kind of cumbersome. So Excel sheet is again a handy way of doing it. And that's why Specflow has this particular feature as a plugin. But of course, not free of cost. It comes with some cost. Okay, so this particular feature files step definitions have not been mapped yet. So I'm just going to go to the generate step definitions and then I'm going to copy these methods to the clipboard. And uh, let me go to the solution explorer. And this is the unit test.cs I got. So I'm going to open this. I'm going to paste it right here. Instead of test class, I'm going to change it to binding. And this scenario i'm just going to make this some value maybe the console dot right line i'm just going to type this p0 i'm not going to perform any operation here just to uh, imitate what's going to happen or what is the data i'm just going to come up all right and there we go All right, looks good now. And now if I build this solution. So we'll be getting some error here saying CS1029 and it has generation error and access to the path of this particular folder is denied. Actually, this error is not very meaningful. And the reason for this failure or the error is because the source that we have given in our feature file is actually not pointing to the source or the Excel sheet that we are pointing to. Since it is not there in our project and also it is not there in the source stack, we will be getting this kind of error. Actually this error, as I already said, is not very meaningful. So what we have to do is now we have to include the data.xlsx file that we created in our project folder. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna show you what I'm really talking about. This file that we created, the data.xlsx file. So I'm gonna include that into my project. So for that, I'm gonna show all the files. The data.xlsx file is there. So I'm gonna include this into my project. And also make sure that you change the property for the copy to output directory from do not copy to copy if newer. Just save this and in the source, just give the name of the file that you're looking for. Right? You can optionally give the sheet name as well. So if you're gonna point the data from the sheet one, then you can just specify the sheet one here or sheet two here. It's up to you if you want to specify. So I'm not gonna specify the sheet name for now because the data is actually sitting for me in the sheet one. So I'm gonna just save this. And now if I try to build the solution, and now you can see the build got succeeded. And if I go to the test explorer, you can see that I can see the two tests coming up. So here it says add two numbers of 20 and add two numbers of 40 in here. So meaning it's taking the two data which is available from the Excel sheet and it's displaying their values. So now if I try to run the selector test, you can see that the test will execute and we'll get the output. All right, so if I go to the output, you can see that I'm getting the value right in here. Right, so it says that the given uh, I have entered the value 20 and I have entered the value 30 and I can see the result as 50. So everything is as expected right now. So this is how you can create the error-driven testing using Specflow.
So that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.